Pharisees were coming up against him and he, he stood firm. He said, y'all ain't going to get me to change my story. My story is I was born blind. I was born blind. But a man called Jesus came by and, 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 and put a poultice on my eyes and now I am seen. Now whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say, I will continue to say that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Step into being a young grown person. To allow the teachings of Jesus Christ to be the place where you get your information about reality. If you're going to keep it real, keep it real in light of the word of God. God says in his word that I am above. My thoughts are above your thoughts. My ways are beyond your ways. This is what God says. God says, I am not only imminently with you, but let's keep it real. I am transcendently beyond you. Babylon with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was a bad dude that he was nobody to play with. And when he put an image in Babylon, in the plain of Dura, everybody had to bow. But oh, not only bow out of their uh, uh, out of their will, but bow out of fear. But there was three little Hebrew dudes who stood up in the plain and said, Oh, king, we are not careful to answer you concerning this matter. Let me tell you something. When you know God like that, let the trouble come. Let the trials rise. And let the heat come on. Because I'll have the victory to stand in any situation and declare that my God will make a way out of no way. Thank you. 
address shortly. Families be grieving the loss of a loved one. But we will be mindful of the fact that God has been gracious to us. His faithfulness is the first and the new each and every day. Morning by morning, morning by morning, we see the blessings. Amen. If there's no other reflection, join me, if you will, in offering a word of prayer. Amen. Father God, in the quietness of this moment, we come, Lord God, to say thank you. Father God, there's many things that we can thank you for. But we thank you by for being our God, for being our Savior, for being the one who has maintained us, for being our sustainer, our provider, and our refuge. Lord God, we reflect on the times that have passed, uh, many days have passed, and you brought us to the, the latter part of, it, of this year, and we thank you that you're with us now, and we offer this word of prayer. You've heard the praises of your people, and Lord God, you know the heart of each one that sits in this sacred place today. You know what they're going through and what they've been through. And you know the joy and the happiness that they are now experiencing because, Lord God, without you, we can do nothing. Every breath that we take is ordained by you. Every step that we take is ordained by you. And the day we celebrate, Lord God, the little baby Jesus who came well among us as, as a man. And Lord God, it's through his obedience that we can face tomorrow. Lord God, there are some people that uh, need healing. You hear the names call them, you know what they need. I'm not going to stand and try to tell you what to do, or how to do it, or when to do it, but I just pray so pray for will be done in their life, Lord God, because they believe and trust in you. Those who need healing, Lord God, we pray that you grant them peace and perseverance, that they will keep their hearts and their minds focused from you. They believe and trust in you, Lord God. That in you all things are possible. That you've never lost a battle. And Lord God, we just say thank you. For the bland, I thank you, Lord. Know, your sister's not doing well. We know, Lord God, you're there with her. You've only mentioned the family of the reader, the ones that need prayer. The reader mentions the name, Lord God. You hear the name that we mentioned. We pray that you're full of grace, Lord God, and ask that you as, do as you see fit. Thank you, Lord God. You have brought us a man on the way. We're here today, Lord God, to worship you, to celebrate you, and to give you all the honor and all the glory that you so richly deserve. Thank you for what you have done for us. The song and the fellowship, the caramish, the, the fellowship you've given us, the closeness to a family, Lord God of God. You maintained us, you kept us together, and we appreciate that, and we thank you for that. And Lord God, as we move throughout this day and through our service time, we just pray that you will come and join us, that the Holy Spirit will come and abide in our hearts and our minds. We pray, oh Lord God, you forgive us all our sins. Give us a clean heart and right frame of mind to be obedient to your word. Help us to trust and obey because there's no other way, Lord God, to be happy in you except to trust and obey. Yeah. That's the one who stands in the pulpit shortly to give us the word. Thank you for the songs that are yet to be sung. May you be glorified in all that we do and all that we say. Because God, we owe it all to you. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name, in thanksgiving, the church say amen. 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 amen.
Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Ain't no secret what God can do. We want to celebrate. We birthday. are going to celebrate Let's my brother. <laughs> Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yes, uh, on this uh, 25th day of December 2022, uh, let me thank you for getting up on this cold Sunday morning, Lord have mercy, to be in the house of the Lord. But this is the place we ought to be, amen? Because this is the reason we are in here. Yes, indeed. Praise the Lord. <coughs> um, we just want to uh, encourage you. <coughs> to continue to uh, uh, be a part of all that is still going on in and through uh, the Southside Baptist Church uh, during these days. Uh, for the most part, we are now meeting in person uh, here in the uh, in this facility uh, on Wednesday evening. Our regular uh, meeting time goes on. Uh, if you'll notice in the bulletin, the uh, uh, the adults are. Uh, studying um, the Ten Commandments, uh, lead, led by uh, um, Albert Tate. We, we zoom in uh, to right now media. Those of us who are in the room uh, can see the video in person. Uh, those who are zooming in, we try to uh, make sure that you do. Last week we had some technical difficulty, didn't we, Brother Bob? Uh, but we'll try to resolve that. Uh, as as we move along, uh, praise the Lord. And then uh, our, <coughs> the youth uh, are meeting uh, in the uh, youth room downstairs on Wednesday evening. Uh, the daily devotionals are in the foyer. We encourage you to pick them up. Uh, winter advisory. Uh, please be uh, aware that if if uh, we get a situation where we cannot meet. On a scheduled meeting time, uh, we will try to reach out uh, to you by phone, by text. Uh, but if we haven't uh, reached out to you and you have a question, uh, check the website. Uh, we'll post the information there. Uh, praise the Lord. Now, I just want to remind you that next Sunday morning, uh, we go back to our regular meeting time. Uh, Bible study Sunday school at, 10, at 9.45 in the morning. And then the worship time at 11 o'clock. Amen? Amen. Uh, now we come to worship the Lord by bringing him uh, an offering, a gift, if uh, for the use of a better terminology. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, uh, let me see, Deacon Field, if he would voice uh, our prayer to God for this opportunity to present him a gift today. Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, that this is the time that we take our many of our gifts and we bring it to us to the storehouse. Lord, we ask you to just bless those gifts, multiply them, and so that you can be a blessing to many, Lord. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
20 to 30. <laughs> yes, indeed. Praise the Lord. All righty. <laughs> Listen to the angels sing. 
special time of the year about uh, uh, what's under God's Christmas tree for you. You remember that? Um, I said something, uh, some things like uh, these last Sunday morning, that under your Christmas tree uh, this morning, perhaps there are a number of gifts, uh, gifts that are specific uh, in nature. In other words, uh, they're not interchangeable. Um, when, when I go back home this afternoon, later on, we'll be opening some gifts. Um, I hope there's one there for me, Reverend. Uh, uh, but, 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 but see, none of the other folks who will be participating in that uh, can take my gift. That's, you know, specifically designed for me. Uh, we said uh, last Sunday morning that perhaps some of those gifts are placed there out of a sense of uh, obligation. Uh, we also said that some of those gifts are placed there to impress somebody else. You, you know that deal. <coughs> but God's gifts, uh, they're there for everyone uh, who want them. Uh, for example, uh, if you go and take uh, the gift, uh, I can come behind and take the same gift. And it's, it's, it's specifically designed for me and for you. Uh, we talked about last Sunday morning the gift of hope. Um, and uh, we said a couple of things that, uh, for example, the Bible speaks about hope that sustains us uh, in life and uh, hope that provides confidence uh, for living. Uh, this morning, <coughs> very briefly, I, I want to pick up where we left off. Um, I try to tell uh, these preachers, you don't have to cram everything in one in one service because hopefully we're coming back for another service. Amen. Uh, you can pick up where you left off. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about two other gifts that's are, that are under uh, God's Christmas tree. Uh, one of them uh, is joy. One of them is joy. Um, Proverbs 10 and 28 uh, says this, uh, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. Now, there are some other translations that translate it this way. The hope of the righteous shall uh, provide joy. Now, I, I, I went and tried to figure out what is joy. Uh, you know, we talk, about, we, we, we talk about joy in life. 
Uh, and uh, as I said last Sunday morning, in all of these things that we're talking about, uh, there is what I refer to as an earthly dimension of it, and then there is a spiritual uh, dimension of it. Uh, I went to the Oxford Dictionary, and here's how uh, it defines uh, joy. It says, it is an extreme uh, emotion, uh, emotional pleasure. Uh, it goes on to say that it is extreme gladness. And some of us uh, work from the emotion. Uh, and uh, if I send something your way that pleases you, or that makes you happy, or that excites you, or, 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 or that puts you on what we refer to as an emotional high, uh, we refer to that as joy. On, on the other hand, uh, the, the, the dictionary also uh, defines joy as a sense of contentment, mm -hmm. a sense of satisfaction, a sense of gratification. Now, let me, let, let, let me go on uh, to suggest that that is what we need to figure out or, or, or lean on when we think of the joy that God gives to us. A sense of, a sense of satisfaction, a sense of uh, a, a contentment. Uh, let me ask you a question and don't answer, don't implicate yourself by answering out, out loud. Are, are, are you are, 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 are you content with who you got, with who God had made you to be? Uh, do you understand that, that uh, the Bible says that you are marvelously, yeah. you are wonderfully made? Yeah. There, 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 there's nobody else like you. They, 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 somebody might look like you, uh, but but they don't have the specifications that you have uh, a sense of a sense of contentment a sense of uh, a sense of satisfaction uh, uh, about life um, uh, and proof to be uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 uh, puts it this way it says the joy of the Lord is your strength uh, and, and, and somebody has written a song that goes something like this, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. You see, what you need to do is you need to claim uh, uh, all of the promises that God put out there. Um, uh, Jer uh, uh, Nehemiah had called the people together and, and, and for one more time, the, law of, the laws of God were written. Nehemiah sent the people home with this message. He says, he says, he said, go now. He, he, he said, eat the fat of the land. And he said, take care of those who don't have. Yeah. For he said, remember the joy of the Lord is uh, your strength. Because the reality of the matter is when, when the joy of the world uh, passes by and it's over and it's done, uh, those of us who know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior know that we have a greater uh, joy in life and, and uh, that will last when all of the earthly pleasures of this life is done. Uh, secondly, uh, the Word of God says that under God's Christmas tree is a thing called peace. Now, I, I, again, w w what is peace? Is, is, it, is it tranquility? Uh, is it stillness? Is it calmness? Uh, what, what is it? Uh, it is defined in, in, in terms of what we refer to as mental uh, calmness. It is referred to harmony. And Reverend, if I were doing an outline of this study, uh, 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 peace of God puts us in harmony, first of all, with Him. 
And then it puts us in harmony with each other. And then it puts us in harmony with nature. But watch this. Outside of a personal relationship with God, none of this is going to happen. Amen. Let me tell you what Proverbs 14 and 30 says. It says, a sound heart is the life of the flesh. Uh, you know what the sound heart is? <laughs> it is a peaceful heart. Can, can I can I put our stuff in the street? I, 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 I'm I, I'm getting I'm getting at the age now where I I can say like the Apostle Paul, none of these things move me. I ain't about to stress myself out about nothing. Is the stuff ready for company? It's as ready as it's going to be. <laughs> Are you with me? Thank you. Thank but, 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 but I'm not going to lay down tonight and lose any sleep about whether everything is in place or not. Is, is every T crossed and every I dotted? Who cares? Come on, man. Get my brother out. Hallelujah. Man. Are, are, are you with me? Don't, don't. Listen. Listen. Proverbs says, uh, he said, he, he said, a sound heart, a peaceful heart mm -hmm. is, is, is the life of the flesh. I want to be around for a little while. Right. So I can't run my blood pressure up, right. my sugar up or down, or whatever, whatever direction, uh, simply by stressing out in life, yeah, yeah. over which sometimes things that we have no control over. All right, please, sir. And this is why God said, "I, I want to bring you some peace." Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what the psalmist said. If you're writing down Psalms, uh, chapter uh, the fourth Psalm and the, first, the eighth verse, he said, "I will lay down in peace and sleep." <laughs> For you, O oh Lord, you are the only one who can provide safety for me. Oh, I, I've used this illustration before. Let, let me use it again. Have, have you ever seen a baby? I, I know this is before they even begin to crawl. <coughs> uh, lay down and go to sleep. And Moses, in the middle of their sleep, they just begin to smile. Now, now, somebody said the reason they're smiling in their sleep like that, they're having a dream. And, and it's a bad dream for us. But for them, it says, no, that ain't true. Because mommy just fed me. I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good to go. In, in other words, um, I was in the, where was I? In the mall uh, last week. And, 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 and I came by a lady, and she had a little one in the, uh, in, in, in the carriage. And I said, oh, you got a little one. We hit up a conversation, how old? Well, he, he, he's, he's only uh, three months old. And he had, didn't have a care in this world. <laughs> you know what, believers? God wants you to learn how to live that way. Amen. Amen. Because, see, 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 when, when, when you trust him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can understand and know that he is in control. Yes, he is in total control. Yes. There are some things over which you have no control. Mm -hmm. So, I can, you know, we use the terminology, let go and let God. Mm -hmm. But do we really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. uh, we, we pick up our issues and try uh, to go with them. Now. Let me stop here by, by, by suggesting to you, and you know, sometimes folk uh, quote the Bible, uh, no, quote some stuff that says it's in the Bible, <laughs> and, and it just isn't there. Uh, the, the principle is there, but the direct quotation you may not find in the Bible. So now, 
we're going to talk about uh, uh, two kinds of a peace very quickly, and I'm, I'm just going to refer to one and, and just kind of a move on to say the peace that we, that we need uh, and that, that, that we can pick from God's Christmas tree um, can only come from God. There, there, there are certain things in life that uh, man cannot do uh, or man cannot give. Somebody said if religion was a thing that money could buy, mm -hmm. guess what? The rich would live, but the poor would die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad it's not a thing that money can buy. Right. Right. Amen? Uh, so we, we, we do understand that the... Uh, the peace that we're talking about uh, comes from God. Now, Philippians uh, chapter 4 and verse 7. In fact, many of you can quote it from memory. Here is what it says. It says, the peace of God. Thank you, Lord. Which passes all understanding. Shall keep your hearts and your mind. Ah, uh -uh. watch this now. When life seems to kind of a close in on you <laughs> and, 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 and you feel like you don't have anywhere to turn or any exit the scripture says the peace of God uh, 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 um, which passes all understanding uh, and, and, and that will pass an understanding for you to know that God is in control and he will take care of it he says shall keep your heart and your mind. Remember what we said. Uh, we said uh, uh, about um, ab about peace. Proverbs says a sound heart, uh, a peaceful heart. Uh, peace is defined as mental calmness. Uh, shall keep your heart and your mind uh, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now Hebrews. Um, um, Hebrews chapter 13 uh, uh, and verse uh, 20, I think it is. Uh, let me read that for our information. Hebrews uh, chapter 13, all the way down to verse 20. Now, he says, now, watch this. He said, now, the God of peace uh, that brought uh, again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood uh, of the everlasting covenant. Make you perfect, thank you Lord, in every work, every good work uh, to do his will. Working in you which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ uh, to whom be glory uh, forever and ever. Amen. Now, now. Let, let me tell you what uh, this peace will do for you. It will make you, it will make me perfect in every good work. Mm -hmm. Now when you understand that, watch this. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care how you feel about me. What God is saying is that his peace is at work in my life. Mm -hmm. For the believer, his peace is at work in your life to make you perfect uh, in every uh, good work. Uh, somebody had a bumper sticker on their car saying, be patient with me, God ain't done with me yet. Are you with me? So that's, that's important to understand. Now, watch this. Re remember what I said with regard to the gifts that are under the tree? Remember Jesus, uh, when he walked the earth um, and got ready uh, in, in, in uh, John chapter 14 to do his farewell speech. Yeah. Uh, verse 27 in specific. He says, my peace I leave with you. Yeah. He said, my peace I give to you. Mm. Now why on earth would he put it that way? He wanted to make sure that you understood that God's peace is available to the believer. Now, um, 
and I, I, I could go in to explain the two words to leave and to give. Uh, in other words, when he was here with us walking in human form, his, his, his peace was with him. He didn't take it away. Uh, are you with me? Uh, he left it here so that we could have access to it. And then he said, I'm leaving it so that you can have it. Uh, my peace I leave with you, uh, my peace I give um, uh, uh, to you. So what we need to understand is that God's peace is available to us. Now, what kind of a peace are we talking about? In Mark chapter 4, there is a story of the apostles going across a body of water. When it started out, all, everything was fine. <laughs> but in the middle of the journey, there was a storm that came up. And every time I, I, I think of that, I, 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 every time I refer to that passage, I think of my, my old friends. Uh, Julian Cheek and Ed Nesby. We all love to fish. <laughs> Neither of these men had gone out in a boat by themselves. They were always out with somebody who knew how to operate a boat. But this day, Brother Ernest, Nobody could go with them. Okay. So they decided to go by themselves. Okay? They got out in the Delaware Bay, and, and, and like any other thing, the, 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 the weather out there is unpredictable. The, uh, a storm came up, and the boy says they couldn't manage the boat. And, and uh, the more they bailed, the more water came in. Uh, Julian said that they looked back at all of the water that was coming at them and said, we are dead people today. <laughs> so they just gave up and let the wind and the waves took him. They started out in Jersey and ended up in Delaware. <laughs> and the man who came to their rescue at the shore says, fellas, look back. There has had to be a third person in that boat with you all. When you go home, read it. The men were in turmoil, the apostles. What was Jesus doing? He was asleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because he knew he had God's peace in his life. The scripture says that the man came and, and, and where woke him up and said, Don't you care whether we be dead or alive? Uh, 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 why are you asleep? I, I can see Jesus now, you, you know. He, he, have you ever woken somebody who was just sound asleep? And when they got up, they were just totally confused <laughs> and angry at you because you woke him up? Jesus just got up, came up to the deck, Look out at the waves, not disturbed, simply said, peace, be still. Yeah, yeah. And the waves settled down. Now, if you're listening to me today, YouTube, I'm speaking to YouTube. If you are in turmoil, in fact, somebody might be ready 
to take their lives. Jesus would speak to your spirit and say, Peace, be still. Watch this now. When we meet again, we will be in a brand new year. There's a whole lot of folk who will be making some resolutions. Don't make resolutions. Offer a prayer to God. Say, Lord, give me the gift of peace so that I might navigate this year that you have put before me. It's, it's, it's yours. Jesus says, I live with you. I give unto you my peace. Under God's Christmas tree, there is your joy. The scripture says, whipping may endure for the night, but your joy can come in the morning. There is your peace. You can speak to life, whatever may come your way, and says, be still, my soul, because it rests in the peace of God. It begins with a commitment of your life to the one who gave his life for you in order that you might be redeemed. When that becomes a reality, guess what? You can experience hope. You can experience joy. You can experience peace. That is what God offers to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Christmas is more than, than, than a, a helpless baby boy being born in a manger. It is God's gift of hope. It is God's gift of joy. It is God's gift of, uh, of peace to whosoever will receive it. The word of God said, if you shall call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Father, we thank you for this season we celebrate. We thank you for the eternal gifts that you offer in the person of Jesus Christ through your Holy Spirit. We pray, O oh God, that if there are those here today who are, who are tormented by life, that they will find your peace and your joy. Lead us in this time of invitation, we pray. We ask it all in Jesus' name. In the quietness and in the spirit of worship, I'm going to ask you, if you can, to rise to your feet as we sing the hymn of invitation. We're going to sing the first and the fourth stanza. Uh, take time to be holy. to the close of one more uh, time of public worship uh, in this place. 
if there's a matter you needed to settle and you didn't do it publicly, let's talk about it uh, before you leave this place today. For those of you who are joining us uh, via the YouTube, let me encourage you and invite you. If you've never established a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no better time to do that than right now. Uh, call me. I'll reach out to you. And if I can't help you, I'll find somebody in your area who can help you to do that. And you will be glad you did. It perhaps will be one of the best decisions you've made in your life. As we conclude this time of worship, uh, we are encouraging you to be mindful of the season we celebrate. Let folk know that Jesus Christ uh, made a difference in your life. And you want to let them know that by letting your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, we thank you for gathering us in this place one more time. Lord, we thank you for baby Jesus who came to rescue us from the bondage of sin. Uh, we thank you for the great promises that are in your word. We thank you for all of the marvelous gifts that are under your Christmas tree. As we celebrate, may we keep Christ center in all that we do. Lord, we love you, we praise you. We continue to worship you. In Christ's name we pray. Oh, oh.